Hi everyone and welcome back to another Sylvanian Cottage makeover episode. I can't believe it's been two months since I made the curtain video, but now we are going to be moving on to making a kitchen unit. I've since accumulated a few more Sylvanian pieces such as this roll top bath and toilet and a few babies have moved in. So we've got our house looking a little bit crowded. Um, if you haven't seen the bed video, go check that out. But in this video, we're not going to be focusing on the upstairs and I thought we'd start cracking on with the downstairs. And I made a few plans about what I'm going to do here and I'm going to make this little kitchen area. I want to incorporate the original Sylvanian stove and wanted to make a cottage kitchen island with a Belfast sink to go with it along this back wall. So let's get into it. For this DIY, I'm just using regular craft tools and lots of trash and items from around the house. So we have little spare dividers from plastic organizers, an array of bottle caps and plastic screw tops from cartons. And these are going to make our sinks. And these are just uh, cocktail sticks. I also use these little canvas stretchers, which are good pieces of wood to use on a small scale and I have some hooks here which I may be using as a tap. I needed a Belfast sink or something similar sizing and my mum had this great idea of using old ice cube trays. We just so happened to have a broken piece and that worked great. You can also use old Kinder Eggs or um, yogurt pots or any kind of plastic container that has a sort of rim around the edge. You'll find one around your house I'm sure. So the first step was to measure out my area. So I'm using this back wall with the window at the middle and I just measured the area and kind of drew a simple plan incorporating the stove. So I roughly knew how much length and width to do the cabinets for. Once I got the measurements, it was ready to go. You can be rough here because you measure as you go on projects like this. So for this one, I'm going to be using the square uh, ice cube trays to make a Belfast sink. If you have a bigger area in your doll's house, you could also do a double sink with these ice cube trays. Also, this whole technique that you see is interchangeable with the round bottle caps as well. I'm just not doing that for this particular tutorial, but change them out for round caps if you want. So once I have cut that out, um, I want to just round the edges off a little bit with some sandpaper just to make them a bit smoother and not so jagged. So once I had done that, it was ready to get measuring for the cabinets. So for this, I'm going to be just using some cardboard. Um, using the slightly stiffer kind of cardboard. Don't want anything with too much ridges in it. You want it to be quite solid. And um, I'm also using those little dividers as the front piece of the Belfast sink. This type of vintage sink is quite deep in depth. So I needed to add that extra level onto it. Using my rough measurements, I just got a strip of cardboard and started to make scores into it to fold it around into a box. Once I had a box shape, I just slotted the ice cube tray back in the top and glued the sides closed. You wanna make sure you use your cutting mat here to make sure that you have a perfectly square um, cabinet here because if it's a little bit off, it will look a bit wonky and not sit flush in your house. Then I just glued on the ice cube tray on the top around the ridges so I could get a good seal. So now that the sink is done and the cabinet's in place, I wanted to add the front base that is going to be the part of the Belfast sink that is visible on the front. I had to level it out with a bit of a popsicle stick just to make sure it's flush. I then painted it white and added grout on the top and sanded it to get rid of that ridge so that it was completely flush and looked like a seamless sink. I then later finished it off with 
um, a gloss varnish to make it look ceramic. To make the cupboards flush with the sink edge, I'm going to be cladding the cabinets with some wood and popsicle sticks. I'm also going to create a countertop with them as well and curve the edges to fit the contour of the ice cube tray sink. After measuring and cutting a few pieces, I had the first side panel on and I just continued doing this with the side panel as well. I have to extend the cabinets all the way over to the dimensions that I need, so I did the same technique again, just created another cardboard box, added a top onto it and uh, glued it all in place. Once I had finished that, I started to make the front cabinets, covered them in wood. This will be eventually the doors. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do working hinge doors at this moment in time. I am planning on hopefully getting some very tiny hinges and making some really more functional miniature pieces at some point. The next stage was to make this look more real and I used coffee stirrers and I cut those in half to make tiny little slithers of wood that will eventually be the mouldings that go around the cupboard doors that make them look much more three-dimensional. I'm also going to be adding a slight little back splash onto the cabinet as well just to tidy it up. So I mitered these corners and measured them to the size of the door and so I'm going to have two doors on the front, a little drawer underneath and I'm going to patch and make a little piece on the side. I used hot glue for this entire project. Um, it is a little bit of a downside because you will get leakage coming out of the sides because they're so thin and you might have to clean them up with a scalpel but until I get some wood glue this does fine anyways. So I'm adding a tiny little piece on there and I had to cut it down a bit. I also sanded most of these pieces just to make sure that they're as level as I can get them. I added on all of the mouldings on the front as you can see and um, yeah it was looking pretty good. I added a few extra pieces on here very very fiddly and um, the next stage was to grout the whole thing with a wood filler so that I can get rid of those joins and seams that are kind of ruining the look of the cupboard right now. Once I had sanded all that down, it was nice and smooth and ready to be painted. Before that, I had to block out the um, stove at the back just so it fit more flush with the cupboard. Here you'll see a sneak peek of one of the carpets that I'm going to be putting into the living room. And I wanted to paint the cabinets a colour that would go with this and also possibly go with a dark floor. So I was thinking about a rusty orange, uh, possibly a yellow, a blue, or a kind of dirty kind of off green, like a cottage green. So I ended up picking this kind of murky, uh, greeny, yellow, creamy colour and that's going to go all over the cabinets. I'm actually pretty surprised how I managed to get the colour I want because whenever I'm working with green pigments in paint it never really tends to work for me. I'm not quite great at mixing green colours in speci specifically so this one worked out really well and I'm really happy with the colour choice on this. Let me know if you were doing the cabinets what colour you would have picked. So for handles, um, we are going to be using safety eyes. These are just small plastic doll eyes that you can put into um, soft toys and crochet things. And I'm just cutting off a little bit of the stem and I'm just gonna glue them onto the cabinets with hot glue. I sanded the bottoms as well, just to make sure that they were even when I put them on the cupboard and not sitting wonky. 
Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate my messy desk right now? It's looking a mess, but is there really any other way to craft? So after applying the doorknobs, I had just the countertop to go and the tap. So because I had grouted on the top, the natural um, pine finish that's on this wood, it was not going to work. So I decided to use my trusty walnut varnish as usual and just go over all that wood until it was a nice dark color. And of course we can't forget the sink plug. So for the tap, as you've seen at the beginning, I decided to use a picture rail hook in gold. I just bent that little curved piece back and just shoved it in underneath the cardboard and that worked a treat. It's quite hard to pick up on here the sheen of the sink, but it is a very glossy, shiny sink finish with that gloss varnish that I used. So after fixing the stove and the back piece, I could just slot them on. I also used these two small gold nails as tiny little sinker taps. So we are ready to see how it looks in the finished place. Now bear in mind this kitchen and the whole room is nowhere near done yet. This is just a piece that I'm going to take out and put back in once I've renovated the rest of it. But this is how it's looking and I'm really, really happy with the fit and um, how it just makes the room look a lot, lot better. I've actually drawn out a whole plan about what I'm going to do with this bottom room. So maybe I'll share that in a short video later on. Here's Bob in his kitchen, looking pretty cool. And um, I'm going to be adding a backsplash to the back afterwards when I've finished that. And for future plans, I've actually drawn out a floor plan of what the downstairs is going to be and what I'm going to need in here. Um, I'm going to be sorting out some tile paper and possibly make a printable pack for that as well, a blind. Uh, some floor tiles are going to be going in there. I'm gonna have a chair. If you'd like to see a little bit more about the floor plans and future plans of the dollhouse in general, let me know and I can do a short video on that. So to end the video, I have extra cuteness. I've bought a lot of miniatures that I'm going to be covering in a further video, and here's one of them. It's a copper set or with a frying pan, a little casserole dish, and a kettle. And it's so, so cute, and it definitely works in this little kitchen for sure. So this is what it looks like. Super cute and really high quality as well. And here it is on the little stove. This is gonna look so amazing when it's all finished and I can't wait for that. And here's the little casserole dish. Cute, I'm gonna have to make some food as well to go in there because why not? And um, yeah, we've also got a little mini toaster, like with actual toast. Well, not real toast, but fake toast. And it goes in there and it actually has a little mechanism as well. So isn't that amazing? And that's gonna go on the counter as well. So we've got it all set up, the basics are in, and we're ready for the next video. So what should I make next for the doll's house? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.